What's going on internet? It is time for another one of my Roll20 tutorials because today we have a question from a user who's having some issues with their Roll20 tokens. Specifically, they want to pre-position tokens on their maps so that as the story reaches each map, the characters already have their tokens on each map. The edit permissions are set up correctly so that the right players can control the right tokens. And more importantly, dynamic lighting is set up so that everyone can see their tokens and see what's going on. So let's go ahead and jump over into Roll20 and we're going to learn some stuff. We're going to do everything from the ground up. And the first thing that we need for a token is our art. So on the right hand side above our chat box, the second icon is our art library. And we'll click there and then the top button where upload. You can now browse for a file specifically or drag and drop and the art will now be added to your Roll20 art library. I've got a bunch of stuff ready to go so we're just going to use this Dragonborn fighter here and uh, I'll include a link in the description below as to the site that I used to make my tokens because it's a quick and easy way to make uniform professional looking tokens. The next thing that we need for our token is a character sheet for it to be assigned to so I've just made a quick example sheet here and we're going to use that. If we go back to our token and we double click, it will open the edit workspace for that token. We'll go ahead and separate these guys a little bit. The first thing that we have on the upper left is represents character. This is where we assign it to that sheet that we just made. So we're gonna make it represent the example character sheet. Below that is our nameplate, and you can choose to have nameplates on or off personal preference. I normally have the player characters have their nameplates on and then NPCs that are really important also have nameplates but usually your run-of-the-mill run enemies and bad guys I don't bother with the nameplates but this guy is going to be a player character so we're going to turn his nameplate on and then by default our nameplate is whatever the character sheet is named but a lot of times players have really long names or use first name and last name uh, and this is where you can shorten that down to just be something quick and easy so it fits under the token and isn't a, taking up a whole lot of space. On the right hand side of this is bars 1, 2, and 3. And these correspond to the three circles that are above the token uh, when you click on it in the workspace. You'll notice that my colors are a little different than the Roll20 default. And again, that's personal preference. I normally set my bar 1 to AC for my armor class which is armor for me is easy to remember as gray. Uh, bar two, I normally do my passive perception just so as a DM, I can uh, really quickly see what everyone's passive perception is. And then bar three, it's easy for me to set uh, HP, their hit points, so that they can change this stuff on their token because now that we've, we've married this token to that sheet, anything that is changed on the sheet is reflected to the token and anything that changes on the token is reflected to the sheet. So if you modify your hit points here, it'll do it on your sheet. So the next thing is our advanced tab. Jumping over into the advanced tab is where you can do things like modify who can see all of that stuff that we just set on the token as well as set up our dynamic lighting. So on the left hand side here, there are two columns of check boxes, the edits and the C's. By default, all of the edits are checked because whoever controls the sheet can edit all of the stuff in those bars. The C boxes are not checked, and what that means is whoever controls that character can see each of those bars, like our example guy has his 12 of 12 hit points bar above his token, but no one else can see that. So if we go ahead and check all of these on, all of the other player characters will be able to see everyone's hit points and their nameplates and that kind of stuff, including our two auras down here. So if you wanted like the Paladin's aura to be on the map so that everyone can see how far the Paladin's ability reaches and this, thus remember, hey, I should probably be standing close to that guy, you can modify that stuff here. Uh, some people don't like it because they don't want a big ring on the map uh, based on auras. On the right-hand side is our dynamic lighting, and dynamic lighting is a feature for the uh, paid tiers of Roll20 and I don't want to go too in-depth on it now because I can make a, a whole nother video talking about the, the trials and tribulations of setting up dynamic lighting on tokens but for now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set 30 and 0 and multiplier of 2 because that is the the 60 foot standard dark vision we're gonna pretend our Dragonborn has dark vision because they should um, so 30 feet, 
zero beyond that and multiply it by two because he has the 60 foot dim dark vision. And we're gonna make sure that this has sight box is checked because that is what lets the person who owns this token have sight of this token and what it can see with those parameters that we just set. If we were making like a torch or a campfire or some other thing that's actually emitting light, we would go ahead and turn on things like all players see light so that everyone can see the light because obviously all of the characters would see the light that like a torch token is setting up. Uh, now that this is set up, we're going to go ahead and save our changes. And so now our token should be good to go. But one of the super important things that a lot of people overlook is setting it as the default token in the actual character sheet. And it's important that we make all of our changes to the token first and then assign it. We don't want to make a bunch of changes, assign it, and then go back in and edit stuff and then forget to reset that default token because every time you drag your character sheet out of the journal to put it onto the page, if you didn't update that default token, you're going to be working with an older copy. So let's go ahead and grab our character sheet here. We're going to click on the edit button up at the top. And this lower area is that default token that we we're talking about. So we're going to make sure that this token is selected and we are now going to set use selected token. So what that enables us to do is anytime we grab this character sheet out of the journal, we can drag it to the page and our new updated token will be set up. And this is a token that we can then go put on those new maps to make sure that when the party moves from one location to another, we can just jump to that new map and everyone's tokens are set up and we don't have to grab and copy and then move maps and paste. Um, like I said, tokens are tied to the character sheet. So if this second newer token is sitting on another page, any changes that the person makes to the one on the page where the party is should automatically be changing here on this new token. You'll see they both updated there. So now you as the GM can go to the next page. We'll just jump over to this page, which has dynamic lighting set up. And you can go ahead and say, this is where the party's gonna come in. I'm gonna grab this character and drop it there. And you should see that the dynamic lighting and stuff is working, but a good tip is to know that if you hit control L while selected on a token, it will put you into the site mode for that token. And you can go ahead and drag that token around and make sure that the tokens dynamic lighting is working. But this also allows you to check where you've made your walls in dynamic lighting. So there it is just a quick from the ground up how to set up a token and make sure that it is tied to the character sheet. And more importantly, make sure that the permissions and the dynamic lighting are set up before you set it as that default token on the character sheet. Cool. Thanks everyone for watching. And uh, if you have any other Roll20 type questions, I'm not the most amazing guru, but anything that I don't know, I will go find out and I will be making more of these kind of tutorials in the future. So hopefully this helped uh, that user figure out the issue that they were having. I assume it's just a, a default token uh, issue. Um, and if not, we will keep working it. Thanks.